Welcome to Flower Pot Island. If you like adventuring and you like camping, this might be a great destination for you. Especially if you've been looking to get into backcountry camping, but you haven't, this is a great introduction to that. Now, if you like our content, please help us out by giving us a big thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button below. If you don't, well, you won't be supporting us and you want to support us, right? So in this video, we're going to give you all the information that you need to know about backcountry camping on Flower Pot Island. Let's go! This is the dock. This is where you will be dropped off as a day hiker. And it's the same place that you'll be dropped off as a camper on Flower Pot Island. So let's walk into the campsite and check it out. The first thing you'll see are the washrooms and the introductory platforms. As day hikers, you would likely want to go that way to your right where you will uh, hit up the loop trail. But as a camper, you actually want to go left. One thing you'll notice before you go towards your campsite is the composting toilets. So there's about five toilets over here that can be used any time of day as a camper. Um, they are composting toilets, which means that they don't flush. You have to put wood chips down them and they might be a bit stinky, but honestly, for a campsite on a remote island, it's not so bad. Anyway, once you've made your pit stop at the washrooms, as Andy mentioned, we're gonna go left. At the start of the trail, the single track gets immediately difficult. So pick good footwear to wear, something that can walk over loose rocks, big roots, and also think about the things that you are going to pack in and pack out. Big items uh, that you want to bring onto the dock will really hinder the way that you can walk. And also be mindful of all the trash that you have to pack out, because that's going to be an extra thing on your way out. So if you want to be closer to the bathrooms, you want to be at a higher number campsite. As you hit the first campsite, you're going to see it's number six and they're going to count downwards the further in you get. Now some campsites have longer trails that you have to go kind of downhill into and some are closer off the path. So definitely take a look online when you reserve to see what's going to best fit your needs. And here we are at campsite number three. This is one of the campsites where the path into it is fairly short. Now, as you saw on Flower Pot Island, the trail is actually very well marked with stones, but it is unlit. So be careful on your way in and make sure you have some way of lighting your way when uh, you are roaming around at night. Now each campsite is a waterfront site. Some have a little easier access to the water than others, but you'll have a view either way. The sites also come with a wooden platform you can see behind us. It is technically big enough to fit two small tents or one big tent. And the platform itself actually has O-holes with 
a little uh, piece of metal in between. There's two on every side of the platform so that you can tie down your tent and any other apertures that you might be putting up. The last thing that it also comes with is a box to store your food. There isn't any large animals on the island like bears, but there is a whole lot of squirrels. And I'm not lying, there's a lot. We've named probably 50 different ones Chippendale. <laughs> so you'll definitely want to use the box to lock up your food. No. The squirrels are also not afraid of humans. So while you're cooking your food, you got to be in the area or they'll come right by to snatch it up. Yep. <laughs> now the box itself doesn't have a lock on it. You can bring a padlock if you'd like to, but it does have a piece that twists horizontal so that you can't open the latch. So we were fine without bringing an extra lock. Now, to my dismay, there's zero solid fuels allowed on this island. So everything from charcoal, wood, to um, fire bricks, none of that is allowed. This also means you are not allowed to use stoves that requires you to burn biomass, such as a solo stove or a uh, biolite. Bio none of that is allowed. You are allowed to cook with liquid fuels, so an isobutane tank uh, or uh, an propane. alcohol stove or propane is all good to go. Now, that's another really good point. Usually when we go camping, we stay warm at night with the campfire, but you're not allowed to have any fires here. So, very, very important. Check the weather for the days that you're going to be here. And even if you think that it's going to be warm, pack layers because the evenings get quite cold especially with your campsite near the water we are in the middle of september and it's uh during the day it's almost 20 degrees and i'm in a toque and multiple layers and i'm not one to get cold very easily last night it even dropped all the way down to 10 degrees so it was quite chilly oh actually it was lower uh, before i went to sleep um so think fall weather even in the middle of summer Another very important note is that there's no potable water on the island. So you have to bring your water in with you or bring a means to purify your water. Now, Lake Huron water is pretty clear. However, you should never ever drink straight lake water. It could make you very, very sick. So either bring a water filter or boil your water before drinking it. Yep, that's what we did. We have a water filter just in case, but we boiled all the water that's going to go into our mouths. However, very luckily, since all the campsites are waterfront, it is very easy to get water. Another note about food, bring extra, up to two days worth of extra food. The weather here can change on a dime and sometimes the boats just get canceled and you are stuck. So bring extra food just in case. They do recommend up to two days of extra food. It's actually something that's written in the guidelines that you accept when you make a reservation here. And you may think that it doesn't happen that frequently, but it actually happened to us just on the other side. So instead of being able to get to the island, all the boats were canceled and we were not able to come here, which means the people that had our campsite booked prior to us were stuck here an extra night. So extra food is going to be very, very important. And just on that note, I'm going to say again, bring layers and extra clothes. You do not want to be cold on this island. Last but not least, I think Andy has already mentioned this a couple of times, but just another reminder, everything you pack in needs to be packed out with you. So make sure that you bring garbage bags or a garbage bag to put all of your garbage into. And when you pack up to leave, pack it out with you. There are garbage cans on the island, but you're not supposed to use them for pretty much anything. It is just in case. Now, yes, no one will shout at you if you decide to throw your garbage out there, but be nice, leave no trace, and pack your garbage out. Checkout from your campsite is at 11 a.m. The first boat really gets here at noon, so you do have a little bit of extra time to kind of pack up your things. To get the boats, you're just gonna go back to the same dock that you arrived on and take all of your gear out with you. That is a great point about the checkout time. A tip about the check-in time. The last boat arrives at, I believe, 6 p.m.-ish. However, keep in mind that you will have to hike in and set up your camp, and this entire island is not lit at night. You don't wanna be pitching a tent in the dark. So be mindful of that. We would recommend at least three hours of sunlight 
be uh, after you've landed. So check the weather network and make sure that you have sufficient light to set up your camp. Official check-in time is actually at 2 p.m. But because checkout is at 11, we didn't have any issues getting here and running into other people. We also set up our tent way before 2 p.m. And there was a park ranger that came by. He had no problem with us being here early. He even made conversation and wished us a very nice evening. Well, there you have it, guys. That is everything you need to know about camping on Flower Pot Island. This is a really, really great intro, especially for us. We found it fantastic for our first time backcountry camping. And I think it also really opened our eyes that when we go real backcountry camping where we have to hike in, we're gonna need to figure out how to pack a little bit less. The views here are also absolutely stunning and it's crazy to be on the island when there's no other tourists around. We basically had the island to ourselves, which is completely unheard of. With the exception of one person, uh, just in case for emergencies. So if this sounds like something up your alley, book a site and enjoy your night. <laughs>